Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be learning about machine learning with just 10 data points. And now that we got that clickbaity title out of the way, the real topic of this video is PyMC3, which is a very cool library in Python, which markets itself as a probabilistic coding framework. But um, I like to think that it's something that really helps us to run our Bayesian analyses. So we'll see that through the course of this video. To keep things simple in this video, we're going to be looking at a linear model, which is something we have learned very early on in statistics and maybe learned several times. So just as a refresher, a linear model says that the true values of y are generated according to this linear process. We'll just be keeping it as one variable, single variable regression. So it's mx plus b, where m is the slope and b is the intercept. Pretty simple. But of course, we don't observe these true values because there's a little bit of noise added to them. And so the values that we observe, which are called y, are equal to the true values plus some normally distributed noise with mean zero and standard deviation sigma. So if we look at these two equations for a while, there's three things that we're going to care about in this video. m, which is the slope, b, which is the intercept, and sigma, which is the standard deviation of the noise. So let's generate some data where we're going to pick the true slope to be 5, the true intercept will be 10, and the true sigma will be 1 for this video. And if we generate 10 points, 10 data points according to that process, it looks like this, for example. So all the blue points, the 10 of them are our data points that we observe. The red line is the true uh, equation, y equals mx plus b. Of course, we don't observe that, but you can just reference that against the points we do have. Now, if we weren't thinking in a PyMC3 or a Bayesian framework, what would we do? We would just fit a usual linear model. So let's do that first to see if we can do better. So if we fit a regular linear model, this is the output. So the true model is again y true is equal to 5x plus 10, and the true sigma is equal to 1. If we fit a linear model, and to get a little bit mathy for a second, we are using the maximum likelihood estimator, the MLE estimate in this case. The MLE estimate of the slope is 5.9, which is pretty far away from 5. And for the intercept is 9.8, which is closer to 10. And then the standard deviation of the residuals is 1.16. So these three estimated values are somewhat close, some closer than others to their true counterparts, but they're not exact. But the main issue is not really how close they are, but the main issue is that these are what we call point estimates in stats. Point estimates are kind of just single estimates. Hey, I think this is the approximation that I'm going to give you. What we usually want in stats is a whole distribution of values for these estimated parameters. The reason we want a whole distribution is so that we can start looking at it and say that, okay, the most likely thing is this, but it could also very likely be this or this, or if the distribution is really narrow, then we have a lot of confidence in the point estimate that we get back. So we would love to have a full distribution. And so that's where we start turning our gears towards Bayesian analysis. So let's work through some of the math at a high level first and talk about why we need or is nice to have PyMC3. So first we start with priors. This is uh, always kind of a point of contention in Bayesian stats, but let's just pick some priors. So we have a prior for m, which is a slope, normally distributed with mean 0 and standard deviation 20. b is the same thing, and sigma is going to be exponentially distributed with parameter 1. Now let's talk about these upper two for a second. Notice I put a standard deviation of 20, which is a pretty big number. And so this is what we call a relatively flat prior. By picking such a big standard deviation in our prior, we are basically encoding this idea that I don't really know what these variables should be. Therefore, I'm going to center them at zero and give them a big standard deviation. So I'm not really locking them down into any value because I don't really understand too well that what they should be. Now, the likelihood function is what is the probability of seeing the data we actually observe, seeing the y values that we actually observe, given some setting of m, b, and sigma. And that's normally distributed with mean mx plus b and standard deviation sigma as we have from the linear model above. Now the posterior is the most important quantity in Bayesian stats. And the posterior asks the question about what is the probability distribution of our parameters, m, b, and sigma, given that we have some observed data y. So it's asking the reverse question of the likelihood. And we know according to Bayes' theorem that the posterior, which is this guy on the left, is proportional to the likelihood, which is this guy here, times the prior. The reason I've split up the priors into three pieces is because we have this implicit assumption that the priors are independent of each other. Now this doesn't generally have to be true. We can always have our priors be dependent on each other in interesting ways. That would just complicate the analysis a little bit. Today we'll keep it simple. And so we have that the posterior is proportional to this quantity here. 
Now the difficult part with Bayesian stats is that we want to sample from the posterior. I want to get samples of M, B, and sigma from the posterior. But the posterior is the multiplication of a normal distribution, another normal, another normal, and an exponential, which doesn't seem mathematically fun to work with or code. And that's where PyMC3 comes in. PyMC3 says that you don't need to know anything mathematically about the posterior. Just tell me what the priors are, just tell me what the likelihood is, and I'm going to use MCMC behind the scenes to sample from this posterior for you, and that's the power of PyMC3. But with that great power comes great responsibility, and we should still understand what's going on. It's just that we kind of give the work away to somebody who can handle it more efficiently than us. And so let's look at the code. This is the easiest part of the video, the PyMC3 coding. So at the very top, I imported PyMC3 as PM. So with PM.model as model, so you always start a PyMC3 program like this. You specify your priors. So we have three priors. Sigma is exponentially distributed with lambda equals one. The intercept and the slope are both normally distributed with mean zero and standard deviation 20. So that's all encoded there. So the likelihood is normally distributed with mean slope times x values plus intercept, mx plus b, and standard deviation equals sigma. And then we go ahead and put the observed values that we actually get, which are those 10 blue points at the very beginning of this video. And then we go ahead and say, I want you to sample a thousand samples from the posterior. And this cores equals four says I want you to do that four times independently so that we can see how those four independent runs compare to see if they line up or not. And the results, drum roll please, and by the way this took um, about two minutes to complete. So it is kind of a time intensive process. I guess it depends on the strength of your computer as well. But at the end of the day, we have plots that look like this. So let's pause here because this is the main plot we're going to need to analyze in this video. So let's actually look at the right hand side, these uh, kind of jagged looking plots here. So notice that this goes from 0 to 1000. So this is the samples, each iteration of the samples from sample 1 to sample 1000. And you can see um, if we zoomed into the early points here, you might see a lot of change, but you can see eventually they converge around 10, 5, and maybe 1 point something respectively for the intercept, slope, and sigma. And if we were to take all those samples and plot distributions of them, we get uh, plots that look like this. Notice that there are kind of four overlapping uh, density plots here, and that's because we did four independent runs of a thousand samples. But you can see that the shapes look generally the same. Now, as nice as these plots are, I replotted them for ourselves so we can put some additional information on them to tie this whole story together. So here's the plot of the slope. So you can see this power of the Bayesian analysis is that now we have a full distribution for sampling from this slope, from this M. You can see this black line, which is the true slope of five, and you can see that the solid blue line is the posterior mean, or the average of all the samples from the posterior distribution for this particular parameter. And the dashed blue line is the MLE estimate. So this uh, point I want to drive home, another point, is that we don't often use Bayesian stats because we want to do a better point estimate. You can see the point estimates, which means the posterior mean and the MLE estimate, are pretty much the same here. It's just that using Bayesian stats, we get a whole distribution, which gives us a better idea about how confident we should be in this posterior mean. And these red lines are the standard deviations away from the posterior mean. This is the intercept. We can see you're doing a pretty good job here too. Sigma, there's a little bit of a more interesting story going on. The true value is here. This dashed line, which was the MLE estimate, is closer. This solid blue line, which is the posterior mean, is a little bit further away. But the other interesting thing about the sigma distribution is that you can see the exponential prior kind of hiding in there. You can see this uh, posterior distribution is a little bit skewed to the right, like an exponential would be, whereas these guys are looking more like normal distributions. So you can see the choice of the prior does affect the final outcome here. But the main point I wanted to get across is that we can use this cool library using PyMC3 to get a lot of information out of just 10 or 5 data points, which we didn't necessarily get by just doing a simple point estimate, the MLE estimate. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more videos just like this, and I'll see you next time.